All right. Going okay. live. Wow. Okay, you didn't even ask me, Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hi. everybody. Welcome, welcome, um, welcome. Yeah, I've just been forced into this uh this live webinar, so it's nice to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah. Julia. Oh, welcome. What's up? What's up? What's welcome. Up? Yes, you've joined us from the lower level. Yeah. That's how good our webinars are. You've now gone from a, a 1 to 3 to a 10 to 13. So Exactly. Guaranteed learning. results or your money back. Yes. <laughs> Just hustling. How about y'all? Mm. <laughs> We're yeah, all hustling enough. here. Exactly. But welcome, welcome, everybody, uh, to right. the 10 to 13 focus activity. Lost in translation. Hello, Alessandra. Yes. We Absolutely. have had a lot of coffee, as you can tell. Julia, as well, welcome. Um, we will introduce ourselves, but in the meantime, introduce yourself in the comments as well. Tell us who you are and where you are and what school you go to. So I am Jadine. Uh, I am from London in England, and I am a teacher at the Milano School in Via Maravilli. And I am Caesar. I am also a teacher in uh, Milan Meravigli. I was born in Puerto Rico and I grew up in Florida. All okay, right. Okay, cool. Julia's galore cool. today. Wow, well, yeah, three <laughs> Julias. And that's actually that's a good phrase to start with. What's Julia galore? Yeah. What do you mean galore? So galore is when <laughs> we have Anna Maria. a lot of something. So, yeah, a, Julia's galore. Um, what else can we say? Um, you can say, I think, any noun and then yeah. followed by galore. Exactly. House is galore, galore, food galore, English galore. Ah, good question for the, for the Julias. Were you all born in the 90s? Is it a common name for, for people uh, in their 20s now? Yes. Welcome, Mary. Nice to meet you, Alessandra. Nice to meet you all. Okay. Okay, cool. So, yeah, also tell us where you're from. Mary is from Naples. We want to know where are the rest of you from? Yeah, where do you hail from? Oh, that's another. Look at you, just dropping nuggets of uh, Dropping bombs. <laughs> <laughs> where do you hail from? Where do you come from? Yeah. A little bit of an older way of saying it. Yes, now I think you can say it ironically. Yeah. As you just did. <laughs> exactly. where, where do you hail from? Exactly. Oh, Julia. Okay, so you go to the school that we ah, teach at. Wait a minute. Nice. Do you do you recognize her, Caesar? I, I can't tell from the picture. The picture's too small. Oh. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm maybe. I'm new at yeah. the emergency. Yeah, yeah, you, you you've got you got a Anybody in person yet? Oh, okay, we have from Agrigento, from nice. There's two from Naples. From Naples. I like Agrigento. It's very nice. I like the Scala dei Turchi. Okay. I haven't been, but I'm sure I will also like it. You gotta check it I out. Hope. It's cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. Um, okay. So today's activity, we are doing lost in translation. So in this focus activity, we will be talking about moving abroad, as well as looking at some prepositions. Um, so Caesar will definitely have to help me with this because I am very bad at prepositions. I <laughs> still have to learn. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Yes, in the Valley of the Temples too, absolutely. Okay, so Caesar, because you said there was a video for this slide, but we can't watch it, can we? Yeah, yeah, so we'll just go to the questions. Okay, so question number one this is for Caesar, but also for everybody watching. Um, so please answer in the comments. How do you think daily life would be different? For an Amazonian man living in New York, so someone from the Amazons in South America moving to New York. 
the rainforest. So what do you think? So I think daily life for an Amazonian man living in New York would be completely different. I think that it would be like not only living in a different country, but living in a different world with okay. all of the modern day technology. And I think it would take some getting used to. Okay, so what do you uh, what do you think would be different in the daily life of someone in New York compared to someone in the Amazon? So I think the first thing would be um, running water. Okay. Okay. If they live in the forest, they probably have some other type of irrigation, if any, or plumbing. Um, they would probably use the river instead of having an actual shower or something like that. Maybe even a waterfall. That sounds cold. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but maybe the weather will be much warmer, so you'd want a cold yeah, shower. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, New York. Besides the summer, it gets you know pretty cold. Okay. I think okay, also cool. the technology so, as well. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think the number of people would be oh, something yeah. to get used to. New York is a very crowded and very populated city, whereas I can imagine in the Amazon, there are a lot less people, <laughs> so you have a lot more space. Uh, uh, we've got a bit of an echo. Yeah, it seems that it might be from you. For me? All right, let me try and turn this down. All right. Hello. Is that better? Hello. Hello. Maybe. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, um, quick question. Get used to, because you used it, I used it. It's also in question number two. What does get used to mean exactly? Because it's a very common expression we use. It is. So, does anybody know what get used to means? If how did we use it, Caesar? You said you think it would be difficult for someone to get used to a different lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I said it would take some getting used to. Mm. Okay, thank you, Alessandra. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, we can use it in another example as well. So, someone in the Amazon is. Uh, probably used to having a lot of space, as I said. Excellent, Annalisa. So to Fantastic. get used to something is to become accustomed. If I am used to something, then I am already accustomed to it. It's regular for me. Perfect. And we see here that, exactly, Loris, great explanation. To get used to is mm -hmm. to adapt. Yeah. Really, All these really years, nice. I've been explaining it in such a complicated way. <laughs> <laughs> there we have. So we learn from you as well. Exactly. Okay, Loris, maybe the Amazonians are the Amazonians are used to sleeping in shelters, while the New Yorkers are used to living in flats. I think I agree. I agree with that. I can't imagine there being much infrastructure or buildings in the Amazon. Exactly. And one important thing, just remember with get used to, if you have a verb, it's always going to be in the ing form. So it's going to be yes. the object in this context. So not get used to live, but get used to living, get used to uh, sleeping. Yeah, also because it's something that, if you are used to it, it's something that is continuous. So we want to use a continuous form. Julia has given us an excellent example. I am lazy, but I had to get used to waking up early in the morning to go to work. Exactly. 
Really so normally good. with a change to adapt to something. Yes. Okay. And our last question. How does the man, well, how would an Amazonian's opinion on richness differ from the traditional Western perspective? So first, what do you think, or what would you say is the traditional Western view of richness or being rich? So I think richness in, you know, the traditional Western perspective would be having a lot of money, having wealth. We can okay. Also okay. Um, so just before we continue, Alessandra, you've asked the question, is it similar to say usually? Mm. Not exactly. So if I am used to something, in the, the present tense, if I am used to something, then yes, it's something I usually do. If I have to get used to something, then it has to become something that I am comfortable with. Exactly. So I usually study um, in the afternoon. This is talking about a habit now. Mm -hmm. Well, get used to means to adapt. Exactly. So we have said that the Western perspective. Okay, and here we have another question. Mm, so, exactly. We have a lot of kind of overlapping. Yeah. Yeah, there is a slight delay between when we see your comments, but don't worry, we will um, answer them. So to get used to is different from to be used to or used to. Yeah, because here, these, what do you, these what are do you three, mean, Morgana? We can explain all of them. Yeah. Maybe you're better if you want to see them. But we have three different grammar structures. So to get used to, to be used to, and used to. So if you want to, Caesar. Yeah, okay. No, sorry. I'm coming. No, it's okay. Um, so to be used to something. Okay, actually, let's start from the very beginning. <laughs> okay, so the verb uh, to use. We have the verb to use which is when you utilize something. For example, I, you, I'm using my computer to teach the lesson. So to use, to utilize something. The next one is the noun. So we say to use with a z sound like a Z, but a use with a soft S. So a use. A use is the noun form. So, for example, um, one use for a phone is to make calls. Another use is to um, send messages. Okay. The next one we have is used to. Used to is to talk about past Habits, exactly, Morgana, just like that. Yeah. So I used to live in Florida. This means in the past I lived in Florida. So it can be a past habit or also a past fact. I used but to have long hair. Yeah. yeah, but something that is no longer true for the present. Exactly. So I used to have long hair, but now I do not. Exactly. Okay. And after used to, to, to talk about past habits, we always use the infinitive. I used to live. I used to work. I used to believe in Santa Claus, for example. So we can say, I used to believe in Santa Claus. But then I grew up and I had to get used to 
the fact that Santa Claus doesn't exist. So I had to adapt to this concept. But now I am used to it. Now I have adapted, so I am used to it. So to be used to is to be adapted to. So when you already did it, when you are finished adapting, we can say. Okay, really, really nice. These are very clear and concise. Thank if you. anyone, <laughs> no, it was good. Um, if anyone still has a question about this, or if it was unclear, um, then please let us know. Exactly. Um, so, Julia had okay, great, Morgana. Uh, Julia has answered question number three. She says, probably from the Amazonians. Yes, Amazonian's point of view, richness concern is concerned with the soul's worthiness rather than money. Fantastic. Okay. Very so yeah, nice. Yeah, that's really, that's really nice. So I think that the soul's worthiness there, she means uh, in terms of the morals, what kind of person you are, are you a good person or a bad person? Um, okay, cool. Does anyone have a different opinion, uh, including you, Caesar? Do you have a different opinion? No, I, I agree with what she said. It's it's more of a, you know, moral, you know, richness, a moral wealth, we can say. Okay. See, I think that, oh, there you go. Annalisa says it was crystal clear. Fantastic. <laughs> and we can do some examples uh, after yeah, from you guys, sure. though. <laughs> yes <laughs> not from us yeah um so i think that to the amazonian richness is still about having something it's just that that thing is not money so a richness of life is your life full are yeah. you happy do you have people that love you do yeah. you love anybody so these still having these things but it just not being physical. Yeah, exactly. Especially the love aspect of it. I think that's a major um, point, not only in uh, um, maybe in Amazonians, you know, uh, mine, but also in maybe in Eastern, you know, traditional Eastern cultures, I believe would agree with this. Yeah. Okay, Sabrina also has a, a different view. Maybe mm. for the Amazonians, richness concerns having food and drink. Okay, mm. so things to survive. Exactly. Things that the are bare expected. necessities. Yeah, and I like that as well. I think that could be very true. Because um, in, you know, in, I guess, cultures, we say Amazonian mm -hmm. culture or different lifestyles. Anyway, the focus is more on survival you know whereas in more western or more modern lifestyles where we have different types of threats um we focus more on things that we want instead of things that we need absolutely so, absolutely yeah. so usually we have hopefully things we need like somewhere to sleep and food and drink but if you only had these things in western culture you wouldn't say you were a rich person. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so question four. Mm. If you moved to another country, where do you think you'd find it most difficult to adapt to life? And where would you find it the easiest? Why? Mm. So that's interesting. What do you think? Obviously, Caesar, you've moved to at least two different countries because yep. you moved to America and then you moved to Italy. Exactly. So, so. Um, having moved to a couple of different places, I think probably the hardest um, place to adapt to or to get used to would probably be maybe an Asian country. 
just because the language, the languages are, you know, so different from all of the languages I've learned. And I think um, it's, it would be very different, culturally speaking, from the cultures I've experienced and been exposed to. And okay. I think the easiest to adapt to would probably be an English speaking country, for example, um, Canada or the UK, because we have more similar cultures. Okay, so do you think that language plays an important part in culture? Is language I, important? I think too. I, I think so, yeah. I think that language is shaped by where we are, it's shaped by our environment, and it kind of develops to kind of address the everyday problems that we might have in a said location. So I think they kind of, you know, adapt and transform over time together. Okay. So Julia says, would you be able to get used to eating that food? Ah, yeah, I think, okay. So personally, I'm a, um, I can be a picky eater. Okay, uh, so I know what I like. Picky. Picky meaning, okay, you know what you like. Yeah, so I know what I like. So a picky eater is somebody that doesn't eat just anything, but they like only specific things. They don't eat just anything. So I'm a bit of a picky eater. So in some places, it might be harder for me to adapt if, you know, <laughs> I, I I wasn't aware that it that it was so obvious, but thank you. <laughs> okay, and Alessandra says I'm according to Caesar. Mm, maybe um, so, I agree with Caesar. Yeah. Yes. So we we wouldn't say I am according because according to something means like the origin of a thought or a source of information yeah normally so, factual not opinion yes, so based exactly we are in quarantine according to the president according to the news exactly um but if we agree with someone we say i agree and we agree with is the preposition we use i agree okay. i agree with that i agree with your explanation <laughs> Okay. So the final question. Oh, no. So Annalisa has uh, something to say. It would be difficult for me moving where the weather is freezing. Ah. In Naples, we have mild winters and mostly sunny days. My mood is affected by the weather. That's very common, uh, actually. Yeah, and point. I. I agree. If it was very dark or very cold and you couldn't go out a lot, I think I yeah. would be very unhappy. Yeah. That's actually one of the main causes of depression and suicide in very cold countries where they have long winters. Mm. Yeah. And, and Alessandra, one... don't worry. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> Just a quick thing. So for me to move, it's difficult for me to do something, we say. Um, so our last question is, do you think some people experience a culture shock when visiting your country? So when visiting Italy, what aspects of your country would surprise them? Um, so first, what is a culture shock? <clears throat> Oh no. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> so Jadine, did you experience any culture shock coming to Italy? Was there anything that surprised yeah. you or kind of left you you know in yes, awe? Yes, I did. So I thought moving to Italy would be quite easy because uh we are both western european countries. The UK and the Italy. <laughs> but actually, Italy is very different. 
There is a word I learned here called bureaucracy, oh, yes. uh, <laughs> which is kind of, you know, well, actually, I think you all know what bureaucracy is, <laughs> but it's very different uh, in terms of the way uh, the countries or the different cities are run in Italy. It's very different to our home, yeah. um, which I was not used to. And as well, um, Italian people are much more open than British people. Um, and that's physically. When you meet somebody new, uh, they are a lot warmer. They're a lot more physical. Um, for example, the greeting with the kisses on the cheek. In English, we, in England, we tend to keep a distance. Um, yeah. So some things like that were a bit. Um, Alessandra has said in positive or in negative. For this question, you can answer both. Um, and usually a culture shock, though, is something that is not necessarily negative, but something that you are not prepared to get used to. Exactly. So something, something you didn't you expect. Didn't expect. Exactly. <laughs> Spaghetti with meatballs. I love I love the spelling on that too, because that's how Americans pronounce it. <laughs> Spaghetti. Okay, and so Julia has said a shocking aspect could be the extrovert behavior of Italians. I agree with that. That's how I feel. Um, Annalisa, <laughs> in England, you act as if the coronavirus is always in the air. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's really, uh, I really like that. Yeah. We are. We're very, um, we are nice people, but we are more conserved. You can say we are more, yeah, closed. Um, and finally, Julia, uh, if I moved to another country, probably I would have some difficulties with the new culture. I think you need years to deeply understand a culture. I, that's yeah, really, I really nicely worded. And I agree. Uh, Caesar, do you feel now like you're um, very settled in Italy or do you ever miss uh, Puerto Rico or miss the United States? So, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting because, I mean, between the UK and the US, there are some differences, <coughs> but there are also a lot, mm -hmm. of similarity, a, a lot of similarities. For example, some of the things that you mentioned were some impressions that I also had. For example, um, the whole bureaucracy thing, um, as well as the, the kind of how people treat you. So here, I, I feel like people are a little bit more open, a little bit friendlier, warmer. While in the United States, even though people are friendly, mm, it's a different kind of friendly. It's like a friendly from a distance kind of thing. Mm. Well, here, I feel like, when they're friendly, it's like you are, I'm allowing you into my circle, into my family. You are one of us, basically. Mm. But yeah, yeah, Italian same, people are very welcoming. Yeah. Very hospitable. But, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, even after living here for five years, there are some things I feel like I can still not get used to. There are a lot of things that I've kind of gotten used to. Other things that I've just kind of accepted, even though I can't get used to them, I've just kind of come to terms with them. So I've accepted them and said, hey, I can't change it. It is what it is, you know? Like a lack of spaghetti and meatballs. Yes, like the lack of spaghetti and meatballs, the lack of chicken parmesan. <laughs> okay, okay. A, um, a joke, of course. Please don't kill me. And Alessandra, okay. For me, a culture shock, we don't say it would be, we can just say a culture shock would be because exactly. the culture shock is your subject. Um, 
if I had to eat insects in Asian countries. But at the same time, I <laughs> would be curious to taste. Let us know how that goes. Yeah. I mean, insects are full of protein. Just putting that out there. Um, so <laughs> we should move on. Right. Uh, yeah, we've got some heckling coming from her, Julia. Yeah. Always the heckling. lack of respect towards Italian culture and traditional cuisine. We love Italian culture and we yeah. especially love Italian cuisine. Exactly. Okay, right. so, so. Culture shock um, in Vietnam. Yes. On this next slide, Caesar is going to read us this lovely story. Oh, I am? Everyone, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. But everyone uh, in the comments, I want you to pay attention and see if you can find the synonyms for these words on the right. So easy, a comfortable life, annoy, and enjoy. Okay. So, um, I moved to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam about six months ago. I thought the whole process would be a walk in the park and I thought that I'd be living the life of Riley but I found it really hard to get used to. Um, some of the customs here have really peeved me. Recently, I visited the Independence Palace with my girlfriend. I was admiring the beautiful architecture while standing with my hands on my hips and a passerby disapprovingly shouted at me. Also, last week I was standing on the metro with my arms crossed and received a similar reaction. The etiquette here is driving me up the wall. But although these customs grate on me sometimes, I'm getting accustomed to the country and I'm having a ball meeting new people. Okay. So I think for annoy, by the way, guys, there is more than one synonym. Absolutely. I think there are, there are definitely two. I think there are three. Even more than that, oh. I think. I think at least oh, really? seven, maybe. No, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay, so like I said, we know there is a slight delay in the comments, um, but we'll just wait a moment and see if anyone has answered. Um, Caesar, do you think you would enjoy living in Ho Chi Minh City? So I've actually visited it. Yeah, okay. I actually went for my honeymoon and it was nice. Oh, wow. It was, I think, the most modern city in Vietnam. So they had oh. like Starbucks and and things like that, yeah. but um, I don't know. I feel like the the language would still be a big thing to kind of get past. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would cool. do it for a while. <laughs> cool, cool, and excellent, guys. So we've got some responses, Sabrina. Uh, it says, easy, a walk in the park, so does Lavinia. Oh, welcome, Perfect. Lavinia. Yes. Having so a ball. In Enjoy. The park. Absolutely. Enjoy having a ball. Yes. A comfortable life, the life of Riley. Yes. Although, I don't know where this phrase comes from. Do you yeah. know? Do you I know? have never heard that before, actually. No, maybe it's, oh, I've heard of it, but maybe it's from a book. Yeah. Or a film that is not one that I know. <laughs> yeah. I would um, just say living the life. Uh, yeah. I'm living the life. It's nice of not say living the life. Um, so if something is really hard, Alessandra, it doesn't necessarily annoy you. Because to be annoyed isn't to have a challenge, but it's when something is repeatedly irritating you something is repeatedly happening that you don't like um sometimes that can be annoying yeah. but it's just not a direct synonym for annoy um but lavinia yes annoy peeved do you ever say the word peeved caesar not really i would probably only use the noun i would say I like it's a pet peeve of mine uh, I think peeves then can be quite British. Yeah. Can you say this? Yeah, living la vida loca, yeah. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, so we have he driving me up the wall as well. Excellent. If something is really annoying, we say it's driving me up the wall. Yeah, like you said before as well, um, irritating. So something mm. can irritate you. Here yeah, says something can grate on you. That's a new one for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. If something, if something is grating, it's, it's just another way of saying it's annoying. You can uh, use an ing adjective. Uh, for example, if you are trying to study and someone is eating really loudly beside you and it's annoying and you cannot concentrate, you can say the sound is really grating. Mm. I'll say maybe like another way we could also say this is it's really grinding my gears. Oh, I like that. Or it's really um, pushing my buttons. Pushing, pushing my buttons. There's also another one with the word. What is the word? Which oh, one? rustling my gym, rustling my jimmies. Oh gosh, that that one I had never heard. <laughs> no, I like it though. Yeah, really I like rough. it. Okay, so well gym. done, everyone. Excellent. Uh, so I think we've already answered the first question but the second question for everyone watching um so have you ever had to get used to something while being on a trip abroad and uh, yes grind my gears family guy is pretty good <laughs> yes you know what really, really grinds grind my gears, gears. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah all of you have you ever had to get used to something while being on a trip so not living somewhere, but just on course. a holiday or <laughs> yes, push my buttons exactly. is another way to say annoy. So you can say this thing really pushes my buttons. Exactly. It really irks me. Irks is a great one. I like that. Irks, irritates, annoys. Um, pisses me off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know we were allowed to swear, but sure. Um, yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> they got to know all sides of English. I mean, it's true, it's true. Especially 10 to 13. If you don't know it by then, you will <laughs> never, ever, never, ever. Never, never. <laughs> uh, what type of trip? We're talking, we're talking of a about holiday. A holiday. <laughs> um, so yeah, Caesar, have you ever had to get used to something while on a trip? Yeah, so um, back to this trip in Vietnam, uh, I had to get used to everything. Well, not everything, but they normally have spices. They have spicy food, and I personally cannot eat spicy food, so um, I had to kind of get used to it. Um, that that's just that's I'm upset for you. Yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> it good, was it good. was rough. It was rough. <laughs> Piss me okay. off. I love it. Yes. <laughs> it's great. So in our next uh, ten to thirteen, we can just do curse words, common yes. cursive. We'll put yeah, a yeah. <laughs> we'll put a sensor on it, and exactly. then uh, give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not against that. Socialism for all. Yeah. Um, I got used, okay, so here, don't forget, we use the ING. Um, so driving. I got used to driving on the right. Where are you from, Clara? Because we don't drive. In the UK, we drive on the left as well. I'm still not used to driving on the right. So oh, man. I'd be scared I'd to drive on the left. I'd probably, I'm scared to drive. Know. On the right, I'm scared. To, I'm scared to cross the road here because I don't know where oh, the cars are coming from. Even now, even <laughs> now, they just they come from everywhere. No, I mean I know where they're coming from, and I'm still scared to cross the road. <laughs> um, so here, <laughs> that's fair. That's a fair point. Um, got used to or had to get used to. Mm. It depends what you mean. Because to I got used to something, as we know, is I adapted to something. But if I had to get used to something, it's saying I adapted, but I was forced to. 
Okay, so it had two shows that you were kind of obliged to. You yeah. had to do something. You had no choice in the set, in the matter. No, you had to adapt. Um, okay, Clara, you're from Verona. Do they drive on the left in Verona? If so, maybe I should move. Maybe that's where I'm, su <laughs> I'm supposed to be. Um, as far as I know, they, they drive on the right there too, so um, that might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent, everybody. So, um. Where do you think we should go for the with this Caesar for the last ten minutes? All right. So, I'm not so sure think, what is um coming up. I think we could go ahead and skip to the other questions, maybe. The prepositions. This. Yes, is, exactly. Okay. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> for the last part of the lesson, uh, we have another gap fill. Woo. Uh, and we need you guys to tell us the prepositions that we should put in the gaps. Um, so, although there are no options, that's how you know you really are 10 to 13. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to find these prepositions yourself. Um, number one, although I can't really boast blank my level of English, I thought I'd have enough to get by when I moved to Australia. Um, so, Caesar, what, what does, does it mean? Most mean? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, so. The same question. Okay. So, <laughs> to boast is to brag. Exactly. So, to talk overly highly of yourself or your skills. Exactly. Um, and what I'm about to get by, Caesar? What does to get by mean? So to get by means to survive. Okay. For example, Excellent. when people ask me, ah, oh, do you speak Italian? I say, oh, I get by. Okay. You know, I'm so not a professional, speaking. but I can survive. Okay, cool. So number two, you must prepare a very thorough visa examination if you're thinking of moving to Moscow, okay? Or leaving your house. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So what is thorough? And everybody uh, who's listening, just look, make sure you uh, understand the pronunciation of this word as well. So the G and H we do not say, it's thorough. Exactly, or in American English, thorough. Mm. Um, but what does it mean? Mm. So this means very detailed, very detailed examination. Exactly. In depth. Number th in depth is good. Number three, be sure not to drink water. Mm, the tap in Guatemala. So the tap, um, I think in America you say the faucet. Exactly. So this is the thing in our kitchen sinks, in our bathrooms, that we can move to run water. Number four. Apparently, it's normal for locals in the rural villages of India to stare foreign travelers. So to stare is just to look intently and not blink and only so blink? blink is when you close your eyes just once um so that your eyes do not get dry okay and so not, can, not when if you i blink to... one eye ah this is a wink ah yes and so... this is used to flirt or to show you are telling a joke or a secret uh, and Finally, number five, uh, Moldavian people insist mm, providing the best hospitality. So where are Moldavian people from? I'm not sure. From the Maldives. Ah, I am stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. We've all learned something new today. Exactly. Um, Me included. So while, yeah. 
while I was reading those out, I see a lot of you have answered, so we can go through. Um, number one, so yes, Annalisa, you are correct. Uh, I can't really boast about. Caesar, why do we use the preposition about? So about here, we use it because normally about means, mm, this one's one of the harder ones to explain. Um, it means regarding, it means related to. I can't boast about my level of English. I think about something I'm writing about. So it usually means uh, pertaining to or related to something. Okay, excellent. So number two, you must prepare for a thorough examination. Um, is it always prepare for, Caesar? Uh, no, it could be prepare to. Ooh. Ah, so, you can prepare to do something. Exactly. Okay. So here we have two possibilities, two and four. So two and four can both be used to explain a reason, to explain why you do something. But for with nouns, for example, for an examination, for work, for the project, and to we use with verbs. So to get through customs, to um, pass the exam, to visit my friends. Yes. And sorry, because I've just written the word read on, but my laptop is being really slow. So that should be reason. Ah, reason, exactly. Yes. Okay, but well done uh, for those of you who got that correct. The next one we have is be sure not to drink water from the tap. Caesar, why do we use from? From, because in this case, it's the origin of the water. From Rome with okay. love, for example. Okay, cool. Um, number four, apparently it's normal for locals in the rural vi villages of India to stare at foreign travelers. And well done, because I think everyone who answered this question said at and not to. Exactly. Excellent. We always look at or stare at something. Exactly. Because this refers to a specific point. At is always used for a specific point. For example, right now I am at home. Um, excellent. And finally, Moldavian people insist on providing the best hospitality. And again, well done, Lavinia, and Lisa, Mary. Wonderful. So you all got that correct. Yeah. Great job, guys. You guys are rock stars. Yes. That did not so, get lost in translation. <laughs> no, excellent. So uh, we are at the end now of um, this webinar. If you have any final questions, please let us know. Um, but just to summarize, we have some prepositions. Well done, you are all geniuses. Um, we've also discussed the differences between uh, when and how we can use the word use, um, as well as looking at some synonyms for the words easy, a comfortable life, annoy and enjoy. Um, and we had, I think, a really nice discussion. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Thanks, everyone. We will see you soon. Okay. Stay Bye. thirsty, my friends. <laughs> Bye.